what's happening guys, it's been more than 24 hours after the big announcement and we've got some facts and we actually can finally sum up the whole picture and see what's really happening, what's not and actually see some pros and some cons of the whole Marvel and Sony deal. We've got 10 facts about this deal, 10 facts to discuss whether they're actually good or bad and whether we should worry or not. Of course, number one, Spider-Man is not going home. That's what should be clear right now. One of the most trending Twitter hashtags right now is Spidey is home. Well, that's not the case. People have to realize that Spidey isn't going home. Marvel did not acquire Spider-Man rights from Sony. Nothing like that happened. It's a collaboration deal between Sony and Marvel. It's more about Spidey standing on a crack in between Sony and Marvel. With that being said, there are some reports that this whole deal is actually a part of the huge plan by Marvel where they essentially want to get the rights from Sony. That's right, they see a possibility in eventually getting the rights, uh, Spider-Man rights back to themselves, to Marvel Studios. Let's see how it will turn out, but Marvel actually good at planning things, so who knows. Number two, Sony aren't getting any money from Spidey's appearances in the MCU and in exchange Marvel aren't getting any money from Sony's future Spider-Man films, such right. As we know, Sony will still continue to distribute the Spider-Man films, they will still go with this future spin-off films such as Sinister Six, Venom Untitled, female superhero films, but Marvel won't get any money from that. The deal allowed Marvel to use Spidey in MCU. In Sony's mind, this will give Spidey, the brand new Spider-Man, a fresh big start, a huge boost. But Marvel aren't getting money from Sony's Spider-Man films and Sony aren't getting any money from Spidey's appearances in the MCU. Now, this is more of a con, actually, of this whole deal. This is more of a bigger problem and it might be even a bigger picture than we see right now. If you think about it, Sony can still uh, mess up with Spidey films, with the spin-off films. Let's say Spidey appears in the MCU in Civil War or some other films and it's actually a fantastic film. His role there is just written so well. And then he appears in Sony's spin-off film and it's actually bad. Which eventually might result in Sony's demise. That's right, if you think about it, maybe at some point if this will be a, a trending thing, you know, if Spidey's roles in the MCU, Spidey's appearances in the MCU are actually received well and Spidey's appearances in Sony's films are received bad people will dump Sony's films you know if they will see that uh, the next film is distributed by Sony is created by Sony they won't see it and if they it's about Spidey appearing in the MCU they will actually go and cheer up for Marvel and eventually Sony will have to think about something else but that's probably not going to happen I mean Marvel Studios their creative team along with the Feige will actually help Sony if they messed up with the spin-off film maybe they will give them some advices and things might be actually all Right. Number three, it is known that Sony will have a final say over the casting of the brand new Spider-Man, which isn't really a problem, nothing to worry about here. Uh, the announcement of the brand new Spider-Man should take place within a few months, I believe, maybe a bunch of months, and whoever will play the new Spider-Man, Sony can't mess up with that, honestly, at this point, uh, Marvel will give them a bunch of suggestions as to who potentially might be this much younger version of Peter Parker, and eventually Sony will announce the brand new Webhead. Fact number four, amazing Spider-Man producer. Uh, Matt Tomek and Evie Everett are actually bumped down to the executive producers. Uh, they will have no real say in terms of creative direction, in terms of giving the final word, how to do character right, what type of plot element to include or to exclude. You know, Everett and Matt Tomek are just executive producers, and there are other people, including Feige, who will actually give the final say, especially, you know, if we're talking about Spidey's appearances in the MCU, that's all about Feige. As for Sony's new Spider Man, trilogy and spin-off films. It's probably Doug Belgrad who will be involved with Spider-Man more and this time he will have the final say and whoever will take the position of Amy Pascal, your previous position co-chairman, will probably have the final say as well. But Abby Everett, Matt Omak, nope. Thank you, you are just executive producers, see ya. Effect number 5, Sony's Spider-Man spin-off films such as Sinister Six and Venom are still in the works, but they're not the same Sinister Six, not the same Venom which were announced previously. This Sinister Six will have to face uh, the brand new Spidey from Sony from 2017, and the Spidey which now is part of the MCU as well, so the Sinister Six is the part of the MCU and Venom is the part of the MCU, so that's more of a good thing if you think about it. It's more 
more about the expanding Spidey's uh, villains uh, rogue gallery, uh, which is part of the MCU as well, and wouldn't be surprised if Iron Man, Thor, Cap will fight some members of the Sinister Six, or maybe fight Venom at some point as well. That would be really, really cool. So Sony continuing with the Sinister Six and Venom and other spin-off films is actually interesting and actually very exciting. Fact number six, it's known for now that the Amazing Spider-Man director Mark Webb is not coming back up. Pro or con, it depends on whether you liked The Amazing Spider-Man 1 or 2. Personally, I did enjoy these films, I uh, enjoyed uh, both of them. So, Mark Webb not returning. <laughs> you know, I did like his vision for the character, I, I'll be honest, I did like this Spidey. I like the relationship between Andrew and uh, Emma, Peter and Gwen. So, Mark Webb did something really, really great there and uh, I'm going to miss definitely. But then again, this changes for the better. I'm pretty sure they will find uh, another decent director for the 2017 Spidey and let's see how it will go. Fact number 7, it was reported by various media outlets just recently that apparently Disney and Marvel offered Sony billions during all these years to buy Spider-Man back. Obviously, it makes perfect sense why Sony never sold Spider-Man. Marvel weren't offering billions just to get Spidey. They knew that Spidey can earn the same billions and even more. And Sony knew that. That's why Sony decided to reboot Spidey. That's why Sony still keeps Spider-Man uh, up on their sleeve. Spider-Man is their biggest property yet and it's funny to know that it's not like Marvel never cared about Spidey or we don't need him. That's not true, they always try to get him back and it's more of a personal pleasure if you think about it, with Marvel actually trying to get the webhead back to their headquarters. Effect number 8, Andrew Garfield is no way returning and as we know just recently he was actually offered to return as Spidey. You can watch my video on that subject uh, to know all the details. Well, pro or con also depends on whether you enjoyed it, you liked Andrew Garfield or not, but as for now it's confirmed 100% that he is not coming back. And personally for me Andrew has been the real Spidey. He's the Spidey I was looking for for many years and it was a perfect replacement, something uh, great after the Tobey's trilogy and he he was just a great person besides portraying Spider-Man, he's a really, really good guy. Uh, all the charity events, all the charity organizations he's been participating in. He's just Peter Parker in real life and finding him, uh, Andrew Garfield was a gem for Sony, a gem which they didn't really use properly, which they didn't really care about. They deleted scenes from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Andrew Garfield said himself, don't do it, uh, we made this movie the way we think it's right, Andrew and Mark Webb and Sony still messed up with, with a bunch of scenes and by doing so changed the whole plot once again not caring about the director, not caring about the actor who put his effort uh, in portraying Spidey and besides Andrew is Spidey fan since like his childhood he told that Spidey helped him during his school years it's really heartbreaking and he wanted Spidey to join the Avengers for me it's a very sad go but as I said uh, just recently this is a price we have to pay in order to see Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe we can't have two things at once and it sucks Fact number 9, Spidey will first appear the brand new Spidey in Captain America Civil War. This is really really great thing if you think about it. Uh, Spidey will first appear in Marvel film before appearing in any of the Sony spin-off films or at Spider-Man 2017, the brand new part of what might be a trilogy. Uh, this way Marvel can establish, can set him up for future appearances in the MCU and can set him up for Sony. They can create a cake, they can bake a cake and then gave this cake to Sony and what Sony will have to do with that cake just feed all the fans with the cake which was baked by Marvel if you know what I'm talking about and fact number 10, Kevin Feige won't be paid anything for producing Sony's 2017 Spider-Man film. I don't know whether it's a pro or con, but I know what's really great about it. Feige being the producer of the very very first Spidey solo film of the brand new Spider-Man, his own film is actually a really really great thing. Once again it ties up perfectly with the fact number 9. It just proves that even though Marvel didn't acquire rights, Spidey's rights back, they will still have their voice uh, even with the first solo film which will be distributed by Sony. Sony can easily avoid any disasters, they can easily be safe. They've got themselves a really really good friends which is a Marvel Studios and it's really really great and very exciting. Anyway, tell me what you guys think about it. Thanks for watching and I'm off for now.